lounge and sun. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan. And I'm Manny. And we're talking some more Mark Miller stuff. We're talking Miller World. We're going to be talking about Nemesis, not Nemesis Reloaded, which just finished. We're talking about the OG one by Mark and Steve McNiven. This, I remember when it came out, was like instantly one of my favorite books. I also, I haven't read this since it first came out. So this, but what's funny is like when we were talking about Wanted recently, that one I remembered a lot more than this. I didn't I remember did the details of, of like what the whole point of this book was in terms of why Nemesis does what he does. But it's like, it's interesting because it's uh, it's basically a Batman analog, but he doesn't give a shit. And he's yeah, it's evil. the inverse. He is a yeah. complete piece of shit. Even so much as the fact that his entire costume is complete white, which I think is an interesting choice. Yeah, especially it when allows, like the blood. Allows, yeah, and uh, I mean, before we get into it, this is the 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 art in this book is amazing. Yeah, and like you're saying, like he's basically the inverse of Batman. You're right. I mean, he goes into a major city, and instead of befriending the police commissioner, he targets them. You know, like like yeah. he, he creates an antagonistic relationship with the biggest cop in the city. Instead of creating a friendship, so look at this. I forgot how fucking like I don't want to say maybe gory is not the right word, but you're watching a dude's body get completely fucking obliterated yeah, by a train. I mean, you can see like entrails and fingers and ears, and yeah. he's getting liquefied. Yeah, and like you said, right? He goes into towns and he targets like their best cop, what would be considered like the action the gore- hero. Yeah, or the like the action the, hero the, yeah. in a movie, like, you know, the, the Bruce Willis of Die Hard or something, or the Arnold Schwarzenegger of a fucking, of the action movies. You know what I mean? Like those those star cops that can, yeah, can yeah, do no true. wrong. So he's he's playing on a couple different tropes with this book, which I completely forgot about. And to be honest with you, I, 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 I feel at least, even though it's been a long time since I read the first one, I think I liked it better this time than I did the first time. I did too, and I had forgotten a lot, a lot of it. It's very different from the recent Nemesis series. I mean, obviously, with the recent one, he's trying to tie it into, you know, his whole like big game uh, wanted crossover, and uh, this is much more of a standalone. But if you did enjoy the recent Nemesis series, you really do need to go back and read this one. A, because this is where it all began. Yeah. B, it's a different story, you know, and it's it's easily as enjoyable, I think. There are things I liked about the new one, you know, that that I'm glad that he, like, you know, changed. But by by no means does this mean, like, oh, this is just an old version that you need to gloss over. I mean, mean, this is where it all started. And, like, the art by Steve uh, McNiven is, I I keep saying it's good, man. Like, I love the way he draws faces. Yes. The expressions are fantastic. I love the way he draws action. I miss miss seeing him on interiors. I'm so upset that he's gone straight to to like doing covers when he does stuff like he did a great series of moon Knight covers for the current run by jed mckay but yeah dude he was he was like one of the best i mean dude most people you know listening and watching you probably know him from civil war if you if you don't know about this book maybe old man logan you know old man logan too yeah like so he worked with mark on like a couple projects before coming to this and it's so cool because like back then you would see like mark would do something with them at a big publisher for the most not all of them but like he worked with john Romita jr wolverine and he goes to those kick ass he worked with steve on on old man logan and civil war comes and does nemesis you know like now he's not doing that now he's just taking the big artists from from their big projects and pulling them over to his to his concepts but you know i i there's there's so much in here in terms of like minute details of like the story that like I don't, I don't wanna, often, yeah, I don't want to like ruin too yeah. much of it, but it is like it's one of Mark's best. I know we just said that about wanted, but it's I think we might even say this every time we pick up another and we do another episode. Yeah, another one. Yeah. But there's a reason why he was considered one of the top writers in comics, you know, and it's it's weird to think that like he's not still considered that. It, uh, but again, I, I think it's weird because like the market has gone away from too much of like oh, this is the best artist. Right? This is the hot artist of the game. This is the hot writer. We don't see that. We don't see that. There's not like creators that I think draw people in the same way that I, at least from my perception, 
was thinking about creators back then in the mid 2000s and before, you know, and maybe that's because there's no Wizard Magazine. I don't know. I mean, the yeah. Wizard would tell you who the hot creators were kind of, you know, and they'd prop those people up from what I'm reading. And there's a lot of stuff I haven't read of the more recent stuff like Magic Order. I haven't read Prodigy. I haven't read there's, you know, some some stuff like that. But dude, his I mean, Ambassadors has been phenomenal. That, yeah, yeah. Well, final issue drops to, today as of the record and we're recording this. Yeah, I, I wanted to point out here in, the, in Nemesis, like look, look at like that sequence, man. Like just the the action that that uh they're creating from like panel to panel, like is incredible. This has a lot of action. Now, that's one thing I realized in the reread. It. It's like it's a lot of it is almost back. yeah, and it, it's it's not boring, and you don't feel cheated because. A lot of times when you read a book that's all action, you, you tend to flip the pages very rapidly. But like the way that Millar and Jones are, are creating these pages is like the images are so intricate that even when there's like panels of just straight action with no dialogue and you're supposed to move fast, like your eyes are still going to linger on the pages because of the level of detail. I don't know. It, it's almost like to me, it has the effect of like when you're watching like a like a, a Hong Kong action movie and like a, it's it slows down or speeds up like. When I was visualizing this, that's how I saw it, you know, like, like that kind of a, like, if this was going to be a movie, that's how I would see it. Almost like the Matrix, you know, like. Totally, dude. And I even think that there's a little bit of like Chris Nolan's Batman films. I, yeah. I, I feel like a little bit of that in terms of like the pacing, the shots, even the cinematography of those movies, like it feels yeah. like some of that was pulled in here. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe this wasn't something that influenced, but. I mean, I'm looking at the Indicia, and it says 2010 for the trade. So I don't know when – I can't remember what year the the issues came out, but this was also by Icon, right, at Marvel? I, be, I believe so, yeah. Because a lot of his books, a lot of his Miller World books were coming out through the Icon imprint at Marvel back then. When Yeah, I mean, you know, Kick-Ass did initially. Yeah. I think this did. Wanted, yes. like we said earlier, was on Top Cow, but he did have deals at different publishers. At the like time. American Jesus was, uh, fuck, what was that? Was that Image? I think that was originally at Image, and then there was like Super Crooks, which nobody talks about. I'd never read that. That was at like Avatar or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Which I, I mean, um, uh, Super Crooks is also a show on Netflix, so it is part of his. Netflix is it Super Crooks? Think... Oh no, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, no, not Super Crooks. Was it Serious Funnies or something? You know what I'm talking about now? Yeah, the the what it was like his talking animal, like 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 yeah. almost like Looney Tunes, but like filthy. Yes. That's the one. That's what I was talking about. That people forget. Super Crooks. I remember. Was... Unfunnies. Yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. One. Wow. Yeah, I mean, look, I the story is very fast paced, breakneck. You know what I mean? Like you're getting a lot of stuff. It's only a four issue um, series, whereas Wanted was six, right? Um, so a lot of things have to go like quick. It's hard to like it's hard to kind of spoil what he does or what the book it's hard. It's hard to talk too long about this book without spoiling stuff. But yeah. I, I do have to say that in terms of like what you're seeing this inverse Batman type character do to the cop, it's fucked up. Like what he does, because it opens with him killing one, but then the major story is him going after the, the one in the U S right. Like he was using Tokyo and he talks about like throughout like how he's gone after these people. You get a little bit of a backstory with him, but is it true? You know what I mean? Like, and there's that kind of stuff that happens. And I think his his origin was kind of funny in terms of you know like why he does what he does. Um, yeah. But the American cop, dude, what he, he the brilliance of Nemesis is insane. Yeah. You know, to the point where like he goes to jail and he did it on purpose for a reason. And what that reason is and what that leads to, it's one of the most fucked up things I've ever seen a villain do to, I guess, the hero. I don't want to call the cop the hero necessarily, but you know what I mean? Like what he does to those kids. Yeah, man. I'm like looking through it now again, you know, and it's like, it's fucked up. But this really is such a great book. And I don't know. It's hard, it's hard for... I, I, I want to talk longer about this, but I feel like I'm just going to spoil shit. Steve McNiven's art paired with this, like this dialogue of Mark's because Mark writes different each book. Like, yeah. you know, it's Mark. He definitely writes to the strengths and stuff. And each one has like a different tone while also having that, like 
the flourishes that he has in his in his dialogue, his snappy dialogue. But the I think to me, this book, it's more about Steve. And, you know, like to me, that's what stands out to me more so is the art as opposed to um, the writing. on this. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, too. I mean, Mark's always been great at pairing himself with just the right artist for each project. I mean, like I I, I really think it's an uncanny ability he has. And it's probably one of his greatest strengths as a creator is choosing a collaborator. You know, like he knocks it out of the park in that department every single time. But yeah, man, this is exceptional art by, you know, like he makes each artist or I shouldn't say make, he helps them achieve career level work in each of the elevates series he works with them. Yeah, elevates. It's like he finds, he really understands comics and understands the collaborative nature so much that like he gives the artists the tools they need to make the story so great, you know, and you can't really think of too many writers that are have that ability that to 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 sort of alter how they approach a project to give the artist the 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 most bang for their for their buck and to me that's what a good comic book writer should should do because in the end of the day uh comics are a visual medium and although writing is extremely important i think great writers like mark millar understand that the artist is what's going to elevate and make this into the project that it is, as he is so he's very very careful as to how he collaborates you know giving giving them the exact tools they need and again i mean we've we, we've talked about what 1985 with time of the air edwards we talked about um wanted with jg jones and like you said each one is different in its writing but the one connecting thread is how he's able to allow the writer i mean the artist to to do the best work they can yeah no i mean look he he works with some of the best of the business you know like we haven't even talked yeah. there's so much books we haven't even talked about that I know I mean, we'll get to. Ass, you know, like yeah. we haven't talked about that. We have Jupiter's you know, uh, Legacy. Jupiter's Legacy with quite well, quietly chrono, uh, chrononauts, uh, yeah. super crooks, you know, like, I mean, it, the list is endless, man, you know, like. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited to get back into some, because like I said, there's a lot I haven't read. Um, so far, we've only talked, well, 1985, I hadn't read. Wanted and Nemesis, I have. Uh, previously read, but there's I'm excited to Starlight. Get we talked about that. Starlight, you know, yeah. Starlight was also great, and again, different. I mean, just to mention Starlight real quick. Starlight was not nihilistic at all. Yeah, compared to the other, you know. So people who argue, oh, he's he's just nihilistic for the sake of nihilism. No, man. Something like Starlight is filled with hope and wonder and and embracing of like a, a simpler sort of like you know science fiction trope, and he made that work well too. So, I mean. Mark Millar is just a, a great writer. I'm I'm glad we're doing this series, exploring all like you know, going back and reading all the stuff he's written because he's he's right up there. And like you said, at one point he was probably one of my favorite writers. Yeah, dude, there was a point where like it was automatic. I was buying everything. And, yeah, like I don't know. It's like Morrison or, or Ennis, you know, like they they get a they get an automatic first look, you know, when everyone yeah. a new project comes out. And it's weird because like I don't know where when that stopped for me. You know, like there was a point where like I. Either I wasn't paying attention as much. I mean, he's not writing as much. I mean, you know, it's it's no big secret that he's I don't know. He's been, very... he's been kind of yeah. like, I, I looked at our Mark Miller section in my shop and I was like, there's a lot I haven't read. So I'm pretty sure like he consistently has something every year. I don't think there's a year where he hasn't had something out in a very yeah. long time. Just based on like, look, Magic Orders on book four. Yeah, that's crazy. And, dude. I mean, I, I read a couple of the first issues of Magic Order. They're, it's good and it's fun. And but Magic Order, you're right. Magic Order has been a big hit for him because I mean, it's it's on book four now, and like it has an audience. Yes, for sure. Yeah. No, there's there's a lot a lot for us to fucking unpack. That like I don't I'm not speaking for you, but that I haven't read. Um, and there's even more stuff that I have read. You know that we both have read that we're going to talk yeah. about. But I'm super stoked to be going through um all of his stuff because yeah he is a great writer they're and they're always fun and they are always books that you want to sit and read in one sitting and i can't necessarily say that about every collection that i read and that's not to say if i don't want to read it in one sitting that it's not good but there's something about these that just like it lends itself to where like you're like no i i'll just read one more i'll just read one more issue yeah, one more yeah. in the collection and then i'll put it down and then before you know it you're done and you're like ah oh, fuck i wish i wish this went longer I'm very excited for, you know, big game. I'm excited to talk about some more stuff. Like, obviously, we should probably talk about 
or what we will talk about is the stuff we know is going to be tied into it. So I know that like Superior um Superior, is going to be in there. Kick ass. Right. So we'll we'll maybe those will be the next couple that we talk about just for the sake of like it being yeah. tied into big game. But I hope you guys uh you know pick up some of these Mark Miller stuff if you haven't read them. If you haven't read them in a while, you got them on your shelf. They definitely benefit from a re uh reread. Yeah, dude. Pick up big game ambassadors if if you haven't read that. Yeah. I'm sure like those went to mold. I think second printings on the first couple of issues. I know Nemesis I think every reloaded issue's it. Had a, every issue has had a second printing for ambassadors. Yeah, so just make sure you go pick those books up. Um, you will not be disappointed in any of them. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for Nemesis. Me too, man. You know, like I can babble on about Mark Millar for a very long time. Yeah, same here, dude. I I just such a fan. Like I said, pick up the books. Be on the lookout for a big game and be on the lookout for more uh, Miller World books uh, on the channel and make sure you follow us. Our links are down below and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. See you next time, guys.